Good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. Good to see you, folks. This beautiful Lord's Day. And, uh, oh, Joe's not here. <laughs> John Mary and Dean have uh, taken off this morning to go to Canada, so they'll be back next week. So um, we'll probably a little bit about that a little bit. But uh, please bear with me for today and then pray for me as uh, we complete the service today. So. Uh, let's stand and sing our, first, our opening call of worship, which is 171. There's something about that next. So, hymn number 171. The red hymn. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here today, and we thank you for each person that's come out, and, and for those who haven't been able to come out, we, we ask your blessings on each person. May we receive something today that we can take to this community and share with this community in this week. In your name we pray, amen. All right, let's, uh, boy, that, I'm echoing. So <laughs> I'm not used to that. Uh, let's uh, do, our, uh, do some songs here. Uh, we're going to do two today. Uh, first one, and you may re remain seated for these, uh, is in the Red Hymnal 371, I Stand Amazed in the Presence. So we will sing verses 1, 2, and 5.
go just a few pages over to 377. It is well with my soul. This was our Sunday school lesson today was It is well with my soul. We talked about it. And we actually learned there are two additional verses that are not in the hymnal. So uh, we'll, sometime we'll, we might sing those. You never know. But it won't be today. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and sing all four verses.
Uh, choir will meet at 4 o'clock tonight or this afternoon and followed by the singing at 5 o'clock. So uh, please come and be part of that. Um, I believe the um, I believe the theme for tonight for the food is laborless food. So it sounds like a lot of trips to the grocery store are going to be happening. So I think that was what was what was. <laughs> so, um, but just remember that uh, I have a announcement here that was left on the pulpit. It's the Shaney Felt family. They're appearing next Sunday at 6.30 at Falls Mountain Church. So that's here if anybody would like to go hear the Shaneyfell family. So it's available for you. Uh, other announcements. Next Sunday, uh, we're starting a new Sunday, well not, not next Sunday, I'm sorry, the 17th, on uh, two weeks from today, we're starting a new Sunday School Sunday called Twisting the Truth by Andy Stanley. So come be part of that. Uh, uh, it will be kicking off. Uh, Thursday, September 21st is Women's Luncheon at Little Bridge Marina, just down the street here from us. Uh, Saturday the 23rd will be uh, movie night at 5.30. I don't think they've picked the movie yet, but uh, we'll, we'll know here soon. And next, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, next Sunday, September 10th, um, we're going to Gunnersville to worship the river with New Hope Church. Uh, so. If you'd like to meet here at 8.30, we're going to leave from here uh, and take a caravan up there. It's very easy to find. I'm going to leave, uh, for those of you who come to the Wednesday, sir, uh, uh, Wednesday uh, Bible study, uh, I will leave some instructions, directions how to get there. It's very easy. Take 431 to Gunnersville, turn on 69 like you're going to Arab, you'll go by Dollar General, go by the Gunnersville Animal Hospital. Then there's a little shopping center there with a Piggly Wiggly. You'll take a left and go down that way, and then where we're going to be meeting is on the right down that road. So it's, it's fairly easy to find. It's Joe and Mary Jean, Diane, and I went there last week to show them where it was. Uh, I think Joe measured it as 41.5 miles from here, so it's not, not that far. For uh, Gary and Cindy, it's a lot closer. So, <laughs> so uh, but anyway, uh, but uh, that will be. Uh, It'll be good to, to do something a little bit different, and uh, a lot of times, <clears throat> a lot of times uh, there are baptisms while we're at the river. What's always interesting is uh, what happens there. I know a few years ago there was a lady who was crossing the Gunnersville Bridge, and something told her turn right here, and she came down and found us, and she was baptized. She was coming from Tennessee. I forgot where she was going to, but she was coming out of Tennessee, and she she stopped. And she was baptized that day, so the Spirit just told her to move, uh, to go that way. Also, at the same time, while New Hope's usually baptizing people, there's a Hispanic church that a lot of times baptizes people at the same time, and so they'll alternate and they'll applaud for each other uh, after each baptism. So it's, it's a really neat uh, experience to go and be part of that. So to need to take uh, lawn chairs and... Uh, uh, whatever picnic lunch you want to come and share with people, you know, kind of thing. Albert Butler's going to be cooking hot dogs there, so he'll at least have the hot dogs ready. So uh, he's, he's always done that. So, But if you have any other questions, just let me know, and uh, we're going to try to leave here about 8.30. Now, for those who have trouble, uh, as you know, uh, you may not be able to, to go, Joe is going to be here, and he'll have a short service for, for those who feel uncomfortable going or, the, or from physical reasons and may not feel like be, they could go there. So so, uh, so remember that. We have any other announcements? Anything going on? Jason, you have noticed we only have one speaker. That one is for some unknown reason that's blown out the back door somewhere. So I'm going to have to call this down here and see what's going on. Joey was here yesterday and he played with it and worked with it. He swapped channels. That one is still out. So I'll get guests the music out here hopefully one day next week. Take care of that. Okay. May have it. I do want to say thank you to a group of people who were here yesterday. Uh, I came down here, Joe and Leon were here, and then we were later joined by Rod and Jerry and Clarence came. 
So the shed has been cleaned out. And then uh, I had to leave not long after that, but the rest of them then pulled the carpet up out of these two rooms here that we're making into restrooms, and they've already uh, put some wood down, uh, and it's coming right along. But thank you to the, those who showed up yesterday to work on that. We're going to have a lot more work to do uh, with regard of putting in the new restrooms. So that's very, very soon happening. So uh, that's something to be excited about. Okay, we have any other announcements, anything? Yes, ma'am. Don't forget about the basic Bible study on Wednesday okay. at 10. Okay. Uh, please come, we're, we're doing Ephesians, we're studying Ephesians, and uh, we also have very good food. <laughs> and this week we're doing salads. Salads this week, okay. So uh, come if you can. Okay. That's great. All right. And like I said, I'll try to have directions for y'all when you, okay. to get to Gunnarsville, so, when you, when you meet, so, any other announcements, anything? Okay, we come to our time of prayer at this time, um, want to make sure you know that, uh, uh, or remind you that the altar's always open, if you would like to come up at any time and, and start praying, and, uh, uh, you know, you're welcome to do that. Uh, I've got a list here that Joe sent um, of course, uh, I'd like to have uh, remembered them and their uh, Joe and Mary Jean and traveling graces for them, and for the uh, hurricane victims in Florida and, and other parts of the country. Uh, of course, lift those up. But I'm going to read this. Um, we got uh, Kelly Stevenson, Roy Beeson, and his brother Bob, uh, Leanne Buchanan, Dr. Scott Benefil, um, Will Lankford. Sheila and Tim Bussey, Charlene Dismukes, Natalie and Marie Smith. Did I say that right? Marie? Mareda. Okay, good, thank you. I just looked at that. Okay. Mareda, I'm sorry about that. Uh, Pat and Peggy Hammond. Of course, Peggy's here today. So, uh, John Minton, uh, Sandra Boyd family, Susan Black, John Hall, uh, David Hodges family, Donna Thomas, Bobby Worley. Uh, Donna Ashley, Robert and Joe Kimbrell, Carol Carlisle, Travis Butler, Audrey Sneed, Hal and Antoinette Williamson, and Lisa Acton. Do we have any others I need to add to that list? Marie? Marie, yeah, Marie's very sick. Right? So, remember Marie? Who is that? Audrey Sneed, yeah, okay. Granddaughter. Yeah, we saw the pictures. So, mm -hmm. so any others? Can I have a give a praise? You can give a praise. Okay, my sister Andrea, you mentioned the hurricane victims. Mm -hmm. uh, I told this on Wednesday, but she lives in Appalachia, mm -hmm. which is right there, that little point that comes down. And to start with, the hurricane was supposed to go right there. Yeah. You know, and I, I was worried. Everything, but it seemed as though as it went along, it shifted to the east. And she had a little bit, the next day she had like five feet of water came up in her yard, huh. but never reached the house. And so that's just from God in answer to prayer. That's right. That's right. So I, I just praise the Lord that she's saved in her house. Yeah. That's a great praise. That's a great praise. We have any other praises? Okay. Without any uh, trouble so far. Okay. Please remember her. She has three more Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And she says that she knew that she felt the prayer. She was so anxious about going in and having it done. But she said she just had a piece about her and she knew that it was perfect. Yeah. Okay. Oh my goodness. So Carol Wilkes, your sister, Martha's sister. Okay. Any others? 
Let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Uh, Sherry's going to play softly and we'll pray and then I'll finish. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today with open hearts and open arms as we look to you for guidance. We praise you. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for our blessings. We've lifted some people up today, whether we have spoken their names or not, that need your guidance, need your help. And make us your instruments of care, that we may give them your love and your, your guidance. Lord, we come to you just thanking you for every blessing you've given us. Bless us and keep us, and may we now repeat the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen I texted Joe this morning, I told him, I said, uh, nobody's going to miss you today more than I will. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway. Come the time we're going to uh, recite the Apostles' Creed. It's found in 881 in the Red Hymnal. So if you will, uh, join with me in 881 in the Red Hymnal. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith may we now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Come to time for our offering at this time. Will the ushers please come forward? <clears throat> Father, you have so richly blessed us. May we now return a portion of that to you for work in your service. Bless the gift and bless the giver. In your name we pray. Amen.
Well, good morning again. It's good to see everybody here. Um, if Joe were here, he'd tell you it's the 36th Sunday of the year, but since he's not here, I'm not going to mention it. Um, well, I will tell you today is pa uh, National Pastor Spouse Appreciation Day. So what is... Joe, what did Joe and Mary Jean do on National Pastor Spouse Appreciation Day? They go to Canada. So, well, we'll have to remember Mary Jean when she comes back. So, but uh, those of you who don't know, every morning I look on the National Day calendar just to see what national days there are. Uh, a few weeks ago, it was National Dog Day. You've always heard every dog has its day. It was National Dog Day then. So, but anyway. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, start with our scripture for the day, which is found in 1 Peter 4.10. And it says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. The word of God for the people of God. Okay. Names are important to us. Uh, you think about when a baby is born, there's usually five questions. How much did it weigh? How long was it? What's its name? What are you going to call it? How's the mother? At least mother made the last list, the last on the list, you know, kind of thing. Uh, but names are important to us. Um, they're so important that sometimes we name institutions after them. Uh, in Madison County, there's uh, Sparkman High School, named for John Sparkman, a United States Senator. Uh, in Morgan County, there's Albert P. Brewer High School, named for an Alabama governor. Uh, you have in Sylacauga, there's B.B. Comer High School, named for another Alabama governor. Um, and then you got Susan Moore High School. Who knows who Susan Moore was? Anybody? Hmm? She was a Susan, Susan Moore, yeah. Well, I, I found out who she was. Uh, our, when our daughter was in the uh, high school marching band, uh, we made a trip one Friday night to Susan Moore High School. And I always made it a point, I was one of the band parents, of course, and uh, I ran the concession stand at our home game. So I'd go to the band's concession stand at wherever we were visiting, and we'd exchange ideas and all this stuff. So I asked them, I said, who was Susan Moore? And they said, well, she is the lady who do donated all the land for the school to be built on. So. Who knows, one day we may have an Edith Mintz High School, you know, so, yeah. <coughs> donate the land. But names are important to us. Names were important to people in biblical times, too. You think about, they were so important, a lot of people changed their names. Abraham and Sarah, those weren't the names on their birth certificates, you know. Um, Paul was Saul. Peter was Simon before that. Uh, Jacob changed his, had his name changed. Who knows what Jacob's name was changed to? Israel, yeah, okay. As we enter a new life in Christ, we undergo a name change as well. We are called Christian, or Christ follower, or there's one that some people are afraid of because it means a lot of dedication to it. Uh, disciple is what uh, some people uh, are called. But w together we share this name. And what does it mean that we share this name? Well, it means we're givers. We give. Um, let's look back at our scripture, and I'll read it again. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. Um, and sometimes it doesn't matter where our talents are. We just use them to serve others and to serve God. And sometimes we have to be a little creative in the way that we serve. You know, we have to take what we have and use those talents the best we can. How many people are familiar with Lance Foods? Like the, the little snack crackers you'll see, you know, kind of thing. How much do you think they spend in advertising a year? A lot. Zero. They spend no advertising dollars. They work more on product placement. Uh, you know, if, you remember, if you're old enough to remember going in a general store and finding those old plastic 
containers that, that they'd have their snack crackers in or all that. They were also the first people to put vending machines in funeral homes. For a long time, a lot of their profit came from funeral homes because they knew people at funeral homes who were going to be there for several hours, maybe. They were not wanting a short order cook. They just wanted a little something to get them through and kind of thing. So a lot of times we have to take whatever gifts that we have to give to others and be a little creative with them, just like Lance Foods did. But in spite of the fact we have these unique gifts, in general terms, I'm going to talk about the th three gifts that we all give. And these are not limited to just these three gifts, but it's the ones I'm going to talk about today. The first thing that we give is forgiveness. We are called to forgive. And it's difficult to forgive sometimes. You look at social media, you look at uh, our newscasts that are going on right now, particularly in this political season, how many times have you heard a politician say, I forgive you, to another one? Okay, you probably won't. Uh, in Matthew 6, 14, it says, If you forgive others their transgressions, your Heavenly Father will forgive you. So we have an obligation to forgive people as well, uh, to forgive these people um, that may have wronged us and whatever, whatever we can, or whatever they had done to us. The thing is, that's very difficult to do. A lot of times you hang on to that, and uh, how many times uh, have you thought about somebody who may have done something wrong to you and something bad happens to them and you're kind of glad, you know. So forgiveness is not easy. So it's something we have to do, though, because we're commanded to do it. And as a forgiven people, someone who has been forgiven, we have an obligation, too. Whenever Jesus in the Bible, you would find that where he would forgive someone what would be the next sentence he would say to them? Go and sin no more. So I forgive you, go and sin no more. I'm glad Jesus gave us something easy to do, right? I mean, that's not very easy to do. But, but that's the first gift that we give to each other is forgiveness. The second gift we give is ourselves. We give of ourselves. Um, Back in the days when Diane and I were freshly married, uh, no kids and all this, uh, we, were, we joined uh, Aldersgate United Methodist Church in southeast Huntsville. And we became part of the young adult Sunday school class. And we started off with about 10, eight, and then it went to about 8, and then it went down to about 6. And then one Sunday we showed up, and it was just three of us. And we said, we got to do something. Something is, is not going on here, that uh, kind of thing. So what we did, what we started doing, uh, which, well, first thing we did, we changed material because the material we had was horrible. But the second thing we did was we started giving of ourselves to others. Like right after the service, people who were of our age and were visiting, we said, hey, you want to go eat? We're going out to eat. You want to go with us? And some went, some didn't. And by the time we uh, moved to New Hope and we left Aldersgate, uh, we'd gone from three people, and, and regularly on a Sunday we had 20 to 25, uh, just by giving ourselves, just by a simple act. You know, it wasn't, uh, you know, any major program we did. It was just we invited people out. There's one lady there who um, uh, told me later, she said, uh, you're the reason we started going to that Sunday school class. And it was great because I had invited her to lunch, her and her husband. And it was great for her that she had that support system because about 10 years ago, her husband died from cancer. And she had that support system there that, to, to help her. So, um, but church growth is not based on programs. It's based on giving of ourselves. Uh, and church growth should not be our objective, but it should be a byproduct of our ministry and our missions. We should be thinking for others, and then uh, you know, we will be blessed in, in other ways. James, the second chapter, 14 through 17, says, 
What good is it if someone says he has faith but does not have the works? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? Also, so also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. So we have to give of ourselves. In, in many ways, and there are many opportunities that we have to do that. The third gift that we give is Jesus, and it's the most important gift that we can give. Um, back when I was about 30 years old, I shared an office with a, uh, a software programmer named Bob. Bob was, Bob was already an old man at 40. I mean, he was just a crotchety old man, and we get in meetings, and he would, you know, just, and we all loved Bob because Bob would say things that we were thinking, but we wouldn't dare say. You know, it was that type of situation. So Bob was this crotchety old, old man already at 40. Uh, it was our custom. We had a uh, staff meeting every Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock, and it was our custom for somebody to bring donuts. And it rolled around. It was my turn to bring donuts. So I was leaving on the Monday afternoon to go home. And I called back to Bob. I said, Bob, I'm uh, bringing donuts in tomorrow. What kind do you want me to bring? He said, bring in the plain old yeast glazed donuts like Jesus used to eat. <laughs> so, so from then on, we started calling those Jesus donuts. If you, anybody in my family refers to them, it's plain old yeast glazed donuts. We call them Jesus donuts. If you talk to anybody I worked with at that time, those are Jesus donuts. And I can look back on that story with a lot of humor. But also I can look back on it with maybe a little bit of sadness because I'm thinking to myself, is that the only time that week that I mentioned Jesus to anybody? It's a little bit compelling. A few weeks ago, some of you were present uh, on uh, August 18th when Joe was uh, uh, ordained. Uh, if you remember how uh, the ordination went, there were several people. I was privileged and, and, uh, to be one of the people to lay hands on Joe as he uh, was ordained into the Global Methodist Church. But there was a bishop there and district superintendent. There were a lot of people there who laid hands on, on him. And there were people, when they were ordained, laid play, uh, hands on them. And it goes back, all the way back, to a time when Tom, John Wesley did that to Thomas Coke. Um, I don't know how many of you know about the growth of Methodism in the 1700s, but what happened uh, immediately after the American Revolution, um, the 